It was a quiet night on Riser Mountain. Most of the pack slept back at Riser Fortress, while Victor, Ian, Nora, and Caden patrolled the Riser Pack territory that was over 200 acres of land and located in what used to be the border between Arizona and Utah. After the shifters came out, making themselves known to the humans, war broke out, destroying cities, governments, in less than a year. The years following took the human population to a new low, where they were now the minority on the earth, with shifters numbering nearly twice as numerous. Law was enforced only if a person took it upon themselves to try and enforce a law. Freebasin was different. It was a town at the base of the mountain and forest below Riser Mountain, and the humans there made an alliance with the Riser Pack. It was still amazing to Victor to watch his new pack family walk among humans freely, without animosity or the need to be on guard. This was the town that stood as the sole example of how humans and shifters could coexist. Watching over the town that was continuing to grow was one of the only things that Victor found he could still enjoy doing. The Riser Pack, while a great family to be a part of, wasn't always fun to be around. Not for Victor, anyway. Even now, he could hear two of the pack, Ian and Nora, a newly mated pair, breathing heavily as they made love. Have the decency to go further up the mountain and spare me, Victor thought. They were predestined mates, which made their union especially passionate. Half the pack was predestined mated which meant being around them and the strong levels of lust they were sharing with the pack through their connection were miserable to all who did not have a predestined mate. Victor felt his case was especially painful, considering he had a predestined mate and lost her. He was already heartsick for Nicole Monet, his predestined mate. He didn't need to be surrounded by sex-driven happy pairs every second to show him what he lost. Growling, his spirit wolf that shared his human body made known his agreement with Victor's bad mood and annoyance with his pack. He did his very best to push the image of Nicole from his mind, but it was impossible. He ran through the forest at the base of the mountain his spirit wolf guiding him while his human spirit admired the image his mind pushed forward. Nicole had aqua blue eyes that were green around the outer edges and light blue near her pupils. When she was angry, as he often made her, Nicole's eyes would lock on him like the predator spirit she shared her body with, the tigress. Damn, that tigress spirit had a way of stirring up Nicole's temper. She was so full of passion that when she felt anything at all for the person, it was strong. There was no halfway with Nicole. He knew that about her, and both loved and hated it. There were many terrible things that Victor did when he was forced to run with the Herod Pack, but if there was one thing in his life that he could change, he would change the way he left things with Nicole. What use is there for thinking like this? There is no undoing the past. Victor shoved the image of Nicole's lovely face, long brown hair and tan skin, to the back of his thoughts. Instead, he concentrated on the sound of wolves running down the mountain from Riser Fortress. He tilted his head to the side, listening to the rhythm of the paws hitting the earth. Killian and Angeline are joining the patrol. Great. Another mated pair to endure. Victor leapt over the slow-flowing river, seeing the stretch of his silver wolf form in the reflection of the water. He was twice the size he'd been when he met Nicole. Would that make a difference to her now, if somehow he was able to find her again? The hurried pace grew faster, sounding more urgent to his wolf ears. Victor turned, starting back up the mountain to check that all was well with the pack. He didn't have to travel far because Killian and Angeline were traveling at their highest speed. Angeline began to shift the moment she saw Victor. This can't be good, 